Welcome to this review. I'm going to show and go through all the features and share my opinion about the 46 212 by 50 rifle scope made by Leica. Uh, as you probably know, Leica is a, a really famous brand from Germany. Uh, they are most famous for their production of uh, cameras, uh, and they are also the inventors of the of the film format 35 millimeters. Oscar Barnack more than 100 years ago uh, but ever since the start they were also producing sport optics uh, in the last I would say 15 years uh, they dominate the market of um, range finding binoculars and small pocket range finders but uh, ever since I would say 2010 or something like that uh, they're also present with their rifle scopes uh, they did rifle scopes also in the past, and they did rifle scopes for the American market uh, also in the two, in the 2000s. But uh, ever since the introduction of Magnus, they're also very present in the European market. So this Fortis series came out in 2019, last year, at EVA in Nuremberg. And the 46 series consists of uh, three scopes. Uh, so 1 to 6, 2 to 12, by 50 and 2.5 to 15 by 56. When they came out, you can check our video also from EVA. We have an EVA report from uh, from uh, Lake Abud. Uh, we were, I would say, not really um, giving enough attention to 46, to be honest, because we were thinking, why is Leica producing one very similar scope to Magnus? And okay, it has a little bit smaller zoom so Magnus is uh, 1.8 to 12 by 50 but all in all the difference is not that big to be honest at that time we were thinking of this uh, but now when we checked uh, the scopes more in detail a lot of things make sense so what is the basic reason for producing 46 by Leica uh, it's very simple when they came out with Magnus they compete with the Swarovski Z6 at that time, Zeiss had only four time zoom uh, Victory HT scopes, and the Swarovski was the, their main competitor. They even have a really big lawsuit when, when um, Magnus came out, but I think Leica won that lawsuit. And if we fast forward a couple of years afterwards, the Swarovski came out with a Z8, and they lowered the prices on all their Z6 scopes. And I was always thinking, okay, what will Leica do now with, with their Magnus? And they said, okay, our Magnus, they came out with the second generation, is such a good scope, it can compete with the Z8 and it can compete with the size V8. So with both European Super Zooms from their main competitors. So they left the prices on the same or a little bit lower um, level of Magnus, normally the prices of Magnus, uh, so that it could be compared with the Swarovski Z8 and the Zeiss Victory V8. And I also think it, it can compete with them, even though on paper it offers a little bit less than 7 times zoom, while uh, Swarovski and Zeiss, they um, offer 8 times zoom. But they needed something to compete with the Z6. So the Zeiss came out with the V6, Conquest series to compete with the Z6, but they are lower in, in price and normally also in a little bit in quality. And Leica came out with a 46 scope to compete with Swarovski Z6. What they also did is that they lowered the price even more for at least 10 to 15%. And now the main question comes, what did they do to be able to achieve this lower price? So first of thing, to be honest, so the zoom is a little bit smaller than it is on, on Magnus. So this is a 6x zoom, 2 to 12. Magnus is 6.5, 6.7, it's 1.8 to 12. Okay, that's definitely uh, where they save the cost. The second thing is that the illumination is far more simpler than it is on a, on a Magnus. Only 9 intensity levels, but it is daytime bright, and I will see the reticle. Yeah. Well, the battery is not inserted. It is daytime bright and it is also finely tunable 
so that uh, it can be used in any light conditions. So this was the first thing. The second thing what they did, they offered only one reticle. So not multiple choices of reticles, only one. And this lowers the production costs. And the third thing was that the scope is made in Portugal. Leica has a factory in Portugal and they produce all the geoids and all the range finders there. And years ago it was always a big debate, but can Leica achieve similar quality in Portugal than in Germany? Well, now after 10, 15 years of geoids, we see that it can. So honestly speaking, the quality, the quality of finish of build and so on is on pair with any German or Austrian scope. So, because Leica owns the factory in Portugal, they are able to control the quality and everything to achieve their standards. And I think this was about it, what they did regarding the cost reduction. Single reticle, a little bit smaller zoom, simpler illumination and made in Portugal where the workforce is a little bit cheaper. Okay, but let's go through, let's say the first, the physical the physical appearance. The scope is very modern. It has a really nice fit and finish and undistinguishable Leica design. You immediately see it's Leica. And it's it has a really, it's well made, well built. Uh, it's filled with nitrogen, it's waterproof, it can withstand any kind of caliber. A well made, made scope. The central tube is 30 millimeters. You can also order it with a standard rail. Leica uses size VMZM rail standard. So the parallax is fixed at 100 meters, which is normal. It's a 12 times zoom scope. And the whole scope weighs approximately 700 grams. So it's a little bit heavier than Swarovski, but not much. Uh, the illumination is powered by a normal CR2032 battery, and the warranty is 10 years. Really nicely made, all metal. Even the magnification ring is all metal which I think is uh, it's much more modern than it is on, on Magnus and scopes from that era, let's say five, six years ago, which still have uh, rubber magnification rings, which we know the rubber with time, it, uh, it just fades. It's, it's not the same of the same quality. Metal stays metal forever. So the reticle, the reticle is only one, 4A, and it's located in the second focal plane. It's a normal hunting reticle, very thin, and also the, the dot inside is very, very thin. I think if you look at specification, it's at least as small as Swarovski or even smaller. So the only smaller dot uh, on the market is probably from Zeiss, which uses optical fiber inside of the, uh, inside of the, inside of the, the reticle. The illumination has nine intensity levels. Uh, even numbers are not written, there are only dots. And you can basically say it quite well from really low intensity levels for uh, low light, dusk and dawn use, or really bright, daytime bright settings all the way from, let's say, seven onwards. Uh, even though on a scope like this, you won't be really needing uh, daytime bright settings. Even though some will say that um, you can even use this scope on driven hunts because the um, lowest magnification setting is only two times. Um, okay, simple, effective, very intuitive illumination system and really, really fine dot so it doesn't cover too much space. First class. The turrets, as you can see on this model, you get a standard, standard BDC turret like you can find on all Leicas. This is more or less the practice of Leica that on Magnus, you, uh, Magnus was the first model with these BDC turrets and later uh, Visus also got them and ER scopes got them and so on. I do think I consider that these are one of the best BDC turrets because they're made fully out of metal. You can buy 12 different ballistic rings for these turrets. They're the same on all Leica scopes and also the locking mechanism, you see it works the same way like on, on all other Leica BDC turrets. They basically, I think, they, they just assemble the same turrets on all their scopes, which is really good because this BDC turret is one of the best on the market. It does feature, like also size BDC turrets and so on, you always have a small error if you're using the BDC rings because uh, 
it, they are not really custom made. There are only 12 profiles which you have to find the closest one to your actual ballistics. Uh, you can also order normal hunting. You see this is the same scope with a normal low profile capped hunting turrets. Really simple. The same as you find on, on Magnus. Crisp clicks, really nice clicks and um, you're not able to reset them to zero and they're multi-turn but they don't have any turn indicator which is also logical this is a hunting scope not a tactical or any other scope what i do have to say the clicks are one centimeter and the elevation range is uh, 14 mils so 1.4 meter on 100 meters uh, the windage i think is 15 mils enough for scope like this even if you want to shoot a little bit longer distances it's still okay uh, there is roughly 9.5 mils of of elevation in one single turn on this BDC turret uh, which is almost one meter at 100 meters and that's also enough for for any shots which are will be ever done with such a hunting scope this is not a long range scope which is logical uh, so it does have a locking function uh, it doesn't need any turn indicator because when you have a BDC turret it is only a single turn uh, and it has a zero stop Okay, if I go to the optical properties, so 50 millimeter objective lens and 2 to 12 magnification range. But now we, we come to the most interesting part. Uh, the field of view is almost 21 meters, which is the same like Swarovski Z6, to be honest. But the light transmission rate is 92%. So when you compare it with and I don't mean when you compare the data sheet, when you look through it, and when you look through the competitors, you see that you get a brighter image. What I also think is that the quality is at least on the same level, if not even better than other six times zoom scopes on the market. And this was a big shock for me, to be honest, because I had previous experience with Visus. I had previous, uh, previous experience with um, uh, ER or how were they called, AR scopes which were produced in Portugal by Leica and they were all four times zoom and the optics there the scopes were were okay and the build quality was superb and, and everything but the optics was I would say average it was nothing really special even the field of view was always like lacking a bit uh, not that you would say that they were bad scopes but when you compare them with Magnus they were just like they fade in comparison not with 46 46 um, just I would say excels in optical performance especially when you look at the price range this scope costs regular price is 2000 euros so it costs less than competition but it, it's on pair when you come to the optical performance or maybe even better it's really really good uh, normally if I go through the technical specification of optical performance uh, the eye relief is 9 centimeters. it also features fast focus. But the real point is that when you compare them even with, with scopes of, uh, of um, top class, Z8, V8, Magnus and so on, 46 is really, really close in terms of optical performance. So like with every summary, at the end I come to the sweet and sour. I go through the positives and I go through everything what could have been improved on this scope. Before that, I will just go through what you get with the scope. You get a manual, you get a manual for uh, like a BDC turret. We also, I think, have a review about this BDC turret. You get a nice catalog for the accessories, lens cleaning cloth, bikini covers, the warranty, which is 10 years. So the warranty, and you also get a certificate who checked the scope and who packed the scope when it went out of the factory uh, but okay let's go through the sweet and sour so what i think it's really sweet about the scope what is the positive definitely optical performance edge to edge clarity and edge to edge resolution is just outstanding uh, maybe I, i'm i was just surprised when i when i optically checked this scope and compared them with the side by side with the competitors to be honest i didn't expect to be that good 
Uh, fit and finish is also very nice. The BDC turret is one of the best in the market. Uh, honestly speaking, I only like the Swarovski BTF more. And even there, there are pluses and minuses with both sides. The BTF is really nice because you're able to, to set it to your um, custom ballistic curve. But here you get all metal and much better quality feel and also I would say much better durability than with the BTF. BTF is made out of plastic. Uh, the iBox is also good on this model. Uh, 1 to 6 is not that good with an iBox compared to Magnus. This one is almost on pair. Uh, and the field of view. Uh, even though when you look at the data sheet, it just says 20.5 meters. You say, okay, that's similar than size and Swarovski. But when you look through it, the edge sharpness in this scope is so much better that you have a feeling that it has a better field of view. Uh, I also like the red dot inside. It's small, it's fine, and it can be nicely tuned even though it has only nine intensity levels for the, for the system. Okay, what could have been done better? Uh, I think still if they would make, let's say, 15 intensity levels, it would have been better. Still not 120, like on the Magnus, but nine, it's a little bit small. Um, what else could have been done better? It's really hard to say. Honestly speaking, maybe multiple choices for the reticle, but let's be honest, uh, that would just raise the costs. All in all, really great value. Probably, like like I said, that it's a benchmark and all six um, uh, six times zoom uh, scopes, rifle scopes for hunting. I was really skeptic about this when I read that because you know a lot of companies just write something in their marketing uh, materials. But I would say that maybe for the 46, uh, especially when you look at the price range of 2,000 euros, it is a benchmark in six times zoom rifle scopes at the moment. So thank you for watching. Please check our other reviews. Check review from Magnus, uh, 50 millimeter, one to uh, one to eight, one point eight to twelve by fifty. Uh, check also other reviews from the competitors. If you need any additional information about this rifle scope, check our webpage or send us an email. Thank you.